Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief, the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Right Honorable Speaker, Distinguished Senators, and other colleagues, members of the National Assembly, the joint sitting of the National Assembly is hereby called to order. We will now proceed to take the prayers. For the Christian prayer, I call on distinguished Senator Igbishaba. And for the Muslim prayers, I call on Right Honorable Abdul Munini Jibril. You may now proceed. This check has Let us pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the enablement for us to be in this chamber this morning. We are here for the presentation of 2024 appropriation. We pray that you give us all the guide and all the wisdom to be able to carry today's activities. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Ya Allah. Protect and guide our country. Ya Allah, protect and guide our president and our vice president. Ya Allah, help them to achieve the good intention and the development programs for the good of our country. Ya Allah, protect and guide the Senate President, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, all Senators of the Federal Republic, all members of the House of Representatives, and all leaders across the country, from the top down to the point of counselors and supervisors in our local governments. O oh Allah, guide and protect our political parties, the APC, the PDP, the Labour Party, the SDP, the ADC, the YPP, and all other parties, but most especially the NNPP. Amal Rasulu bi maunzul Allahi mi Rabbihi wal Muminun. كلنا آمنا بالله وملائكته ورسله لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وصاها لا ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تعجزنا إن نسينا وعطانا ربنا ولا تعمل علينا إسرا كما عملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تعملنا ما لا فقط لنا به وافعنا وغفر لنا ورحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين قل اللهم مالك الملك توت الملك من تشاء وتنزع الملك من من تشاء وتعز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء 
بيارك هير إنك على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين ربنا آتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار Your Excellency, the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Distinguished Senator Bola Ahmed Tunibu, GCFR, Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Distinguished Senator Kashim Shetima, GCOA. My dear brother, the Right Honorable Speaker, House of Representatives, Right Honorable Abbas Tajidin, the Deputy Senate President, my brother Barao Jibrin, and of course the Deputy Speaker, Right Honorable Ben Kalu my good brother, your excellencies, the executive governors present here with Mr. President, the principal officers of the Senate and the principal officers of the House of Representatives, very distinguished senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and right honorable members of the House of Representatives of Nigeria. May I especially recognize in the President's entourage, Right Honorable Femi Bwajabiamila, the Chief of Staff to Mr. President, and also recognize in Mr. President's entourage, the Civil Senator George Akume, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, members of the Federal Executive Council, the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, the Clerk of the National Assembly, members of the Diplomatic Corps. Let me recognize Engineer Ahmad Amshi, Chairman, National Assembly Service Commission, and his commissioners, Alaji Sani Magaji, Tambua, area mention, the CNA, Barisa Kamaru Ogulano, Deputy Clerk of the National Assembly, the Clerk of the Senate here present, and the Clerk of the House of Representatives, the Secretaries of the Directors of the various arms of the National Assembly, the Head of the Security Agencies of the National Assembly, the Head of the Federal Agencies and Parasatals, and of course, National Assembly Management Staff. Invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, and any, if any, Oh, my God, the national chairman of the greatest party in Africa. Let <laughs> me to apologize to the national chairman for the breach of protocol. I just turned and I saw his face. Your face cannot be hidden. His Excellency, the chairman of APC, Ganduje of Nigeria, the greatest in Africa. On behalf of the Right Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, the Distinguished Deputy Senate President, the Right Honorable Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, the Distinguished Senate Leader, the Principal Officers of Bond Chambers, Distinguished Senators and Honorable Members of the House of Representatives, I, Distinguished Senator Gross Vilaquabio, with great honor and privilege, welcome an alumnus of this great National Assembly, our Reformation Ambassador to Asu Rock Villa, the esteemed President, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Senator Bola Ahmed Tunibu, 
GCFI. To the joint sitting of the National Assembly for this crucial budget presentation session of the 2024 budget estimates. We collectively extend the same sentiments to our esteemed Vice President, His Excellency Kashim Shetima GCON, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, the Chief of Staff to Mr. President, the Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, and indeed all honorable members of the Cabinet of Mr. President, and of course, other members of Mr. President's entourage here present. It is said that no matter how high the eagle flies, its talons keep pointing to the earth. Mr. President, we know that no matter how high you rise in life, your heart will always point to this assembly. Mr. President, the United States of America has had democracy for about 247 years. But it was only when it marked its 185th anniversary, 185th anniversary, that it succeeded in produ producing two former senators, John F. Kennedy and Lyndon Johnson, as president and vice president, respectively. But within 24 years of our democracy, we have achieved what took the United States of America 185 years to achieve. Not only do we have two former distinguished senators serving as president and vice president of our dear country, we also have other alumni of this National Assembly in positions of public trust. The Secretary to the Government, George Akume, CON, the Chief of Staff, the Mr. President, Right Honorable Femi Wajabi Amila, CFR, the former Speaker, and other representatives in Mr. President's Cabinet. And even for those appointments, we thank Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. President, distinguished and honorable members, maintaining a cordial relationship with the executive arm has always been a requirement of the law. But now, given that our old boys run the executive, a good relationship with the executive is a must for all of us. Never have we had so many bridges and connection points between the two arms of government in Nigeria. So we will continue to work hand in hand and see eye to eye with the executive arm while ensuring that the principles of separation of powers as checks and balances as enshrined in our constitution are observed in the overriding public interest. Mr. President, this is your maiden trip to these hallowed chambers to deliver your maiden budgetary estimates as President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This is a significant milestone in our nation's journey toward progress and development. The presentation of the budgetary estimates sets the course for our nation's fiscal policies and priorities for the coming year. It is an opportunity for us to deliberate, scrutinize, and collaborate in order to ensure that the budget aligns with the needs, hopes, and aspirations of our people. Therefore, the National Assembly bears a great responsibility in the task of reviewing and approving the budget. We fully understand the weight of this responsibility and the impact our decisions will eventually have on the lives and on the welfare of the Nigerian people. It is our duty to ensure that the budget reflects the principles of transparency, accountability, and inclusiveness. Consequently, we will certainly conduct a very thorough and meticulous review of the estimates you are about to present to us. I would also like to express our gratitude to Mr. President for his tireless efforts in driving economic growth, promoting social welfare, and enhancing the security of our dear nation. Your patriotic efforts give us hope. Your antecedents comfort us, while your courage to take decisions motivates us. 
In our people focus legislative agenda, we place a strong emphasis on national security, recognizing it as a cornerstone for progress. These challenges demand a united front. We remain steadfast in our determination to work collaboratively with the executive arm and the judiciary to address and overcome the security challenges confronting our dear nation. In this National Assembly, the death of any Nigerian equates a loss of a constituent to one of us. So whenever we lose anyone to insecurity, it is the sound of the ambulance passing by our window. We believe that insecurity can and must be stopped, and it must be stopped by all Nigerians running around and supporting government efforts. We also want to seize this opportunity to appreciate our armed forces for fighting for us and sometimes paying the su supreme sacrifice for our security. And Mr. President, so far, you have taken the right steps, and calm is returning to our dear nation. We need to acknowledge the specific achievements of Mr. President Bola Metunibu's administration so far. Those who doubted him initially forgot his track record as the governor of Lagos State from 1999 to the year 2007. And Lagos, of course, is the Nigeria's melting pot. They forgot his various economic reforms that helped attract investments and promoted economic growth, improved the ease of doing business, promoted business policies, and attracted foreign direct investment, not to mention today's robust internally generated revenue, which he grew as the governor of Lagos State from 600 million to today's 59 billion. <laughs> Nigerians strongly believe that with a dead profile of the day today, that we are the man for the job to fix our economy. Already we have seen significant economic reform starting with the courageous removal of the petroleum subsidy, which shall become an hour buttress to our nation. We have taken the right steps to unify the multiple foreign exchange markets. We have signed the 2023 Electricity Bill into an Act of Parliament, not to mention other good works that we have done. Mr. President, as the removal of the petroleum subsidy caused some discomfort in the nation, you responded with compassion and dollar palliatives to assuage the effects on the good people of Nigeria. We salute you. We, the elected representative of the masses of this country, we have taken note of your responsiveness to governance. We have also taken note that these bold steps taken so far by this government have created some measures of economic discomfort to Nigerians so we plead for continued support for the government to actualize the long-term benefits of these policies. The pain of today is like the pain of childbirth. When the result of the baby manifests, we will rejoice and will forget the pains of childbirth. However, we hope these budgetary estimates contain provisions to ameliorate the sufferings that the economic measures so far have exerted on our fellow citizens whom we represent. The 10th National Assembly, under our watch, is fully aligned with the President's dreams for our country. Our plans encompass comprehensive legislative actions that will contribute to nation building, economic growth, and social development. Through strategic reforms, we aim to create an enabling legal environment for sustainable progress and growth. Mr. President, distinguished senators and honorable members, the two chambers of this assembly are the two wings upon which not only the executive will soar, but our country will rise as well. There is some parallel unity between the two chambers, as you can see me and the honorable speaker seated together. This is the way we are. Very recently, the House of Representatives set forth its legislative agenda, and I was the chairman of that occasion. And soon, the Senate will also dole out its own. Both chambers believe that we need to encourage the executive arm to unbundle some of the agencies in Nigeria for effectiveness, and even to merge some of them for government, 
to reduce the weight of uh, expenditure. There are also a lot of overlaps in some of the agencies. We are determined to look into those issues for greater effectiveness. We deem it necessary for our country to go back to agriculture as a way of stopping the overdependence on imported food and even the overdependence on crude oil. A money economy is putting all our eggs in one basket. It is a risk we have taken for too long, and we cannot continue to tempt providence. We also believe that education should be prioritized and, some, and something done to stop frequent closures of schools. If we do not checkmate the brain drain, the drain will numb our brains. This is why we must open the door of education. Because when you open the door of education, you close the door of the prisons. We also want to plead with the government to do all within its powers to reduce our high debt profile, which you inherited, which you did not cause. But then, the mark of a great leader is that he fixes the problem whenever they exist without complaint. Mr. President, as we embark on this budgetary presentation, let us reaffirm our commitment to responsible governance, fiscal prudence, and the efficient allocation of resources for the benefit of all Nigerians. Together with the spirit of unity and collaboration, we can overcome challenges and usher in an era of unprecedented development through reinvigorated revenue generation and fiscal prudence. We will continue to support the war against corruption and collaborate with anti-craft uh, agencies to ensure that we do not continue to lose money that could be used to develop our nation. The 10th National Assembly will always stand with the people of Nigeria, protect their constitutional rights, and fight for their welfare. We are glad that you have these sentiments for our people, and you had codified this in the Renewed Hope Agenda. This agenda resonates with us as an instrument the people endorse by voting you into office. Our legislative agenda constellates around it, and we believe its faithful implementation would augur well for our nation and put Nigeria on a new growth trajectory. Mr. President, we reiterate and assure you of the National Assembly's readiness to support the efforts of your administration. Our agenda reflects our dedication to the Nigerian people and we look forward to achieving remarkable milestones for our great nation under your purposeful leadership. However, from whom much is given, much is expected. We will try to perform the oversight functions, and we expect that this assembly will ensure that the taxpayers' money is used to benefit the taxpayer. In conclusion, we assure you that the proposals you have come to present to us will be diligently considered accordingly. We approach this moment with a sense of duty, unity, and purpose to ensure maximum attention to the review of the year 2023 budget performance and the consideration of the year 2024 budget estimates. We request Mr. President would mandate honorable ministers and heads of agencies to avoid foreign travels during this period of our engagements with them. That will prevent them from dishonoring the invitation of the chambers of the National Assembly. They will probably appear before our committees to defend their budget estimates. We will not want to wait for them, otherwise we will lose time, and time is not on our hands. As we embark on the journey of reviewing the 2024 budget, let us remember that our actions today will shape the future of our, our dear nation. Together, let us work towards a budget that reflects the aspirations and dreams of every Nigerian citizen, particularly meeting your campaign promises. Once again, the National Assembly salutes you that on your first day of attending the Economic Community of West African States meeting in Guinea-Bissau, they saw that Nigeria is back on the national scene and elected you as the chairman of ECOWAS. Congratulations.
So, distinguished colleagues and honorable members, let us at this point welcome the president, a man with track record, an alumnus of the National Assembly, to present his budget estimates. Can we give him a resounding applause? Thank you very much. <laughs> the Vice President, Senator Kashim Ibrahim Shetima, GCOA. The Senate President, Distinguished Senator Goswil Akwabio, GCOA. Thank you for your beautiful remark. And I'm glad I'm feeling at home, feeling welcome. The right honorable speaker, Tajuddin Abbas. The APC national chairman, His Excellency, Abdullahi Umar Ganduji. Executive governors here present, my former colleagues and others. The chief of staff. <laughs> Distinguished leaders and members of the National Assembly. Secretary to the government of the Federation. My landlord, or our landlord, <laughs> distinguished years on the wiki. <laughs> Other government officials here present, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. In furtherance of my sacred duty and obligations as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it is my honor to be here today to present my administration's 2024 budget proposal. To this joint session of the 10th National Assembly, this moment is especially profound and significant to me because it is my first annual budget presentation to the National Assembly. Distinguished senators and honorable members of the National Assembly, I commend your swift consideration and passage of the 2023 Supplementary Appropriation Bill and the 2024 to 2026 medium term expenditure framework and physical strategy paper. Your prompt action underscores your devotion to economic development and to the greater welfare of our people. It is also highlight, it also highlights your desire to work in close collaboration with the executive branch. We do not serve ourselves. I appreciate you. We must always strive to work together to serve and benefit the people of our beloved country. Once again, I say thank you. Well done. I am here today confident that the National Assembly we continue to work closely with us to ensure that the deliberations 
on the 2024 budget are thorough, but also concluded with reasonable dispatch. Our goal is for the Appropriation Act to come to effect on the 1st of January 2024. I trust you will do it. It is by now a matter of recorded history that my first physical intervention as president of this great nation was to end the fuel subsidy regime, which has proven to be so harmful to the overall health of our national economy. The second was to negotiate and subsequently present a supplementary budget to enable my government to fund the items needed to restore macroeconomic stability and mitigate the harsh impact of subsidy removal. The third was to secure a second supplementary budget, this time to enable us to keep our promises to promote national security, invest in infrastructure, and provide much needed support to the most vulnerable household in our society. In swearing in my cabinet and reflecting on the unique challenges facing us, I invited the ministers to imagine that we are attempting to draw water from a dry well. Today, I stand before you to present our budget of renewed hope, a budget which will go further than ever before in cementing macroeconomic stability, reducing the deficit, increasing capital spending, and allocating allocation to reflect the eight priority areas of this administration. The budget we now present constitutes a foundation upon which we shall erect the future of this great nation. Analyzing prevailing economic environment, economic condition remains challenging both abroad and at home. Despite lingering post-COVID supply and production bottlenecks, armed conflict in various parts of the world, and restrictive monetary policies in major economies, we expect global growth to hover around 3.0% in year 2024. This relative low rate has significant implications for our economy due to our current reliance on importation. The distinguished senators, honorable members, despite the global headwind, the Nigerian economy has proven resilient maintaining modest but positive growth over the past 12 months. Inflation has trended upward, yes, due to the weak global conditions. To contain this rise in domestic prices, we will ensure effective coordination of physical and monetary policy measures and collaborate with subnational governments to address structural factors driving in inflation in Nigeria. The budget proposal meets our goal of completing critical infrastructure projects, which will help address structural problems in the economy by lowering the cost of doing business for companies and the cost of living for average persons. The Honorable Minister of Budget and Economic Planning will be providing full details of this proposal. Analyzing performance of the 2023 budget, distinguished senators and honorable members, an aggregate revenue of 110.45 trillion naira was projected to fund the 2023 budget 
of 24.82 trillion naira, with a deficit of about 6.1% of GDP. As of September 30th, the federal government's actual aggregate revenue inflow was 8.65 trillion naira, approximately 96% of the targeted 8.28 trillion naira. Despite the challenges, we continue to meet all our obligations. So the theme and priority of the 2024 budget distinguished senators, honorable members, permit me to highlight key issues relating to the budget proposal for the next fiscal year. The 2024 appropriation has been themed budget of renewed hope. The proposed budget seeks to achieve job-rich economic growth, macroeconomic stability, a better investment environment, enhanced human capital development, as well as poverty reduction and greater access to social security. Defense and internal security are recorded top priority. The internal security architecture will be overhauled to enhance law enforcement capabilities and safeguard lives, property, and investment across the country. <laughs> Human capital is the most critical resource of national development. Accordingly, the budget prioritizes human development with particular attention to children, the foundation of our nation. <laughs> to improve the effectiveness of our budget performance, government will focus on ensuring value for money, greater transparency and accountability. In this regard, we will work with more closely with development partners and the private sector to address long-standing issues in education, a more sustainable model of funding tertiary education will be implemented, including the student loan scheme planned to become operational by January 2024. A stable macroeconomic environment is important to catalyze private investment and accelerate economic growth. We have and shall continue to implement business and investment-friendly measures to sustainable growth. We expect the economy to grow by a minimum of 3.76% above the forecasted world average. Inflation is expected to moderate to 21.4% in 2024. In preparing the 2024 budget, our primary objective has been to sustain our robust foundation for sustainable economic development. A critical focus of this budget and the medium-term expenditure framework is Nigeria's commitment to greener future, emphasizing public-private partnership. We have strategically made provision to leverage private capital for big-ticket infrastructure projects in energy, transportation, and other sectors. This marks a critical step towards diversifying our energy mix, enhancing efficiency, and fostering the development of renewable energy sources. 
by allocating resources to support innovative and environmentally conscious initiatives. We aim to position Nigeria as a regional leader in the global movement towards cleaner and sustainable energy. As we approach COP28 Climate Summit, a pivotal moment for global climate action, I have directed relevant government agencies to diligently work towards securing substantial funding comment that will bolster Nigeria's energy transition. It is imperative that we seize this opportunity to attract international partnership and investment that align with our national goals. I call upon the representatives to engage proactively to showcase the strides we have made in the quest to create an enabling environment for sustainable energy projects. Together, we will strive for Nigeria to emerge from COP28 with tangible commitments, reinforcing our dedication to a future where energy is not only a catalyst for development, but also a driver of our environmental stewardship. Distinguished members of the National Assembly, the revised 2024 to 2026 medium term expenditure framework, MTEF, and physical strategy, FSP, set out the parameters for the 2024 budget after a, a careful review or development in the world oil market and domestic conditions. We have adopted a conservative oil price benchmark of 77.96 US dollar per barrel and daily oil production estimate of 1.78 million barrels per day. We have also adopted a Naira to US dollar exchange rate of 750 per US dollar for 2024. Accordingly, an aggregate expenditure of 27.5 trillion Naira is proposed for the federal government in 2024, of which the non-debt recurrent expenditure is 9.92 trillion Naira, while debt service is projected downward to be 8.25 trillion Naira, and capital expenditure is 8.7 trillion Naira. Nigeria remains committed to meeting its debt obligations. Projected debt service is 45% of the expected total revenue. The budget deficit is projected at 9.18 trillion Naira in 2024, or 3.88% of GDP. This is lower than the 13.7 trillion Naira deficit recorded in year 2023, which represents 6.11% of GDP. <laughs> the deficit will be financed by new borrowings, totaling 7.83 trillion Naira. Strategically, 2.98 billion Naira from privatization proceeds and 1.05 trillion Naira drawdown on multilateral and bilateral loans secure for specific projects. Our government remains committed to broad-based and shared economic prosperity. We are reviewing social investment programs to enhance their implementation and effectiveness, in particular, the National Social Safety Net project will be expanded to provide targeted cash transfer to poor and vulnerable households. In addition, 
effort will be made to graduate existing beneficiary towards productive activities and employment. We are currently reviewing our tax and fiscal policies. Our target is to increase the ratio of revenue to GDP from less than 10% currently to 18% within the term of this administration. <laughs> Government will make effort to further contain financial leakages through effective implementation of a key financial management reforms. Distinguished Senators, Honorable Members, in view of the limited resources available through the federal budget, we are also exploring public-private partnership, the arrangement to finance critical infrastructure. We therefore invite the private sector to partner with us to ensure that our physical trade and monetary policy, as well as our developmental programs and projects, succeed in unlocking the latent potential of our people and other natural endowments in line with our national aspirations. Distinguished senators and honorable members, this budget presentation will be incomplete without commending the patriotic resolve of the 10th National Assembly to collaborate with the executive on our mission to renew hope and deliver on our promises to the Nigerian people. I assure you of the strong commitment of the executive to sustain and deepen the relationship with National Assembly. As you continue to consider the 2024 budget estimate, we trust that the legislative review process will be conducted with a view to sustaining our desired return to a predictable January to December fiscal year. I have no doubt that we will be guided by the interests of all Nigerians. We must ensure that only projects and programs that, I mean, with equitable benefits are allowed into the 2024 budget. Additionally, only projects and programs which are in line with the sectorial mandates of MDAs and which are capable of realizing the vision of our government should be included in the budget. As a government, we are committed to improving the lot of our people and delivering on our promises to them. The 2024 budget has the potential to boost performance promote the development of macro, micro, and small and medium-sized enterprises, enhance security and public safety, and improve general living condition of our people. We have not considered great opportunity coming from mineral, solid mineral and other areas, what I promise you that the recovery is here. It is in your hands to thoroughly look into the situation Being sympathetic with the ordinary people out there who put their confidence on us and rest their hope with your and my family. In closing, I am confident that this budget reallocation and directives we set Nigeria on transformative path towards a sustainable and resilient 
energy future, fostering growth economically, job creation, and environmental preservation. It is with great pleasure, therefore, that I will leave before you this distinguished joint section of the National Assembly, the 2024 budget proposal of the Federal Government of Nigeria. <laughs> the title is Renew Hoped Budget. I thank you most sincerely for, atten for your attention. May we collectively chart the course towards a brighter and cleaner future for our great nation. May God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and God bless you all. Thank you very much. Distinguished Senators, Right and Members, it is now my privilege and honor 
to invite my brother, the Right Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, to now move a vote of thanks. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Senator Bola Hametenubu, GCFR. The Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, GCON, Senator Kashim Shetima. The President of the Senate, my good brother, Senator Gosul Apabio. The Deputy Senate President, Senator Barao. The Deputy, Senate, uh, Deputy Speaker, Raul Benjamin Okazikalu. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Senator George Akumi. The Chief of Staff to the President, Right Honorable Femi Bajabia Milan. The leadership of the Senate and the House of Representatives, the Chairman of APC, Governor Abdullahi Ganduje, the entire cabinet of Mr. President here present, executive governors here present, other government officials here present, the entire management and staff of the National Assembly here present, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the National Assembly, I express sincere gratitude to Mr. President for taking time out of the grueling demands of his office to, uh, to undertake a time-honored democratic tradition of presenting and laying the budget estimates for the year 2024. Your presence in this hallowed chamber, Your Excellency, is indeed historic, not only because it represents your first address to the joint session of the National Assembly as the 16th President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, but also because it represents a homecoming for you. By undertaking this important constitutional responsibility, you have continued what you started at your inauguration on 29th May 2023. All your actions since then have been bold, decisive, and purposeful. They indicate your resolve to make decisions that may be hard but necessary to remedy past errors and put Nigeria on the path of economic recovery, security, and development. We commend you for your courageous and determined leadership. Your Excellency, sir, your administration's renewed hope agenda is the philosophical foundation of the legislative agenda of the 10th House of Representatives we have developed a detailed roadmap to ensure that the legislature supports, promotes, and oversees the strategic objectives of this government. A major thematic, uh, thematic area of our agenda is economic growth and development. We recognize the role that Parliament plays in shaping the economic trajectory and the role that we play in influencing economic development. Towards this end, the National Assembly will support the government policies and programs targeted at alleviating poverty, economic restructuring and diversification, as well as uh, social sector reform and development. For the first time in our legislative history, the 10th House of Representatives created monitoring and evaluation committees to ensure effective implementation of the budget and Mr. President's eight-point agenda, among others. I'm happy to report to Mr. President that the legislative agenda was on 4th November 2023 unveiled to the Nigerian public through the distinguished chairmanship of the Senate President, distinguished uh, Senate President Gosu Lapaibio. <laughs> Mr. President, it is a well-known fact that millions of our constituents are living through incredibly difficult times. For this reason, they also look to your own administration to provide quick and sustainable solutions. The antecedents of the President and your track record in governance 
inspire a lot of people and hope in Nigerians. Mr. President, it is for this reason that we cannot afford for, to fail Nigerians. If anyone can change the road and chart a new course for Nigeria, it is emphatically you. <laughs> I have no doubt whatsoever that you can measure up to the expectations of Nigeria through your visionary leadership and commitment to the National Assembly. Accordingly, the budget laid before us today should not be seen as a mere financial document, but a reflection of our collective resolve to address the most critical needs of our long-suffering citizens. In order to promote economic growth and development, the 2024 budget should prioritize social welfare programs to help reduce poverty and inequality. Equally important is job creation and youth empowerment in view of the large and ever-growing youth population. Failure to do this means failure to invest in our future. This budget must also prioritize investment in education and healthcare, which is critical to human capital development and a more productive workforce. Infrastructure development is another critical area of importance, which is crucial for economic growth. The biggest challenge, however, is balancing these priorities within the constraints of available resources. In view of this, and the related challenge of high level of public debt, the National Assembly will ensure that the 2024 budget includes concrete strategies for sustainable debt management, including measures to increase revenue and control expenditure. Specifically, the focus should be on raising more revenue through tax reform, fiscal reform, subsidy reform, foreign exchange convergence, and centralized revenue collection. In our recent engagement with MDAs on the MTEF, we emphasize the need for revenue generating agencies to double their targets to meet the 18 trillion revenue projected in the budget. Mr. President, the effectiveness and legitimacy of fiscal policies depend to a very large extent on public support as the People's House and in line with our legislative agenda, the House of Representatives will convert the first national citizens budget town hall to harness public input and opinion on this budget. We are convinced that this will increase transparency and accountability, improve policy making and increase trust in government. Public participation in the budgetary process has been shown to improve resource allocation and service delivery, as well as a more stable and robust economy. By seeking inputs from citizens, we aim to understand their local needs and preferences better and allocate resources more effectively. Your Excellency, going forward, will also work to institutionalize pre-budget engagements with the executive to further improve and hasten the budget process. The House has already commented, commenced interface with NDAs through the sectoral debates to understand the challenges facing government agencies and identified areas for legislative interventions. All of these efforts are geared towards ensuring that we provide the necessary legislative support to your administration's renewed hope agenda. Your Excellency, I cannot conclude my remarks without highlighting some of the perennial problems that have hampered the budget process in Nigeria. These are well known to Mr. President, who is an experienced ex-legislator. Although the government budget is an important tool for economic management and promoting growth and development, it has generally not met the expectation of improved service delivery and development. This has largely been due to challenges relating to budget enactment, budget implementation, and budget oversight. The well-known gaps in the various stages of the budget process 
underscore the need for budget reforms, including altering relevant sections of the Constitution and existing laws to strengthen the budget process and transform our budget into an authentic tool for development. For this reason, I propose enacting a budget act to strengthen the budget process and promote development outcomes. This is a well-established practice in democracies across the world. Mr. President, let me on behalf of my colleagues in the National Assembly assure you that we will give this bill the utmost priority it deserves. While we give it accelerated consideration, we will digital, uh, diligently synchronize it alongside Nigerians to ensure that when it is passed, it will be a budget that best addresses the most critical needs of our people. Accordingly, we seek the cooperation of all heads of MDS, especially during budget defense by committees. We shall thoroughly examine various aspects of the budget proposals, including economic feasibility, allocation and utilization of funds and sustainability, sustainability of proposed fiscal policies. This is essential for maintaining checks and balances and ensuring that government spending aligns with national priorities and is conducted transparently and efficiently. Therefore, I urge all stakeholders to approach the deliberations on this budget with a sense of purpose and commitment to national development. Distinguished senators, honorable members of the People's House, we must proceed with the huge task ahead. The next couple of weeks will be tough and demanding for us, but I do not doubt our capacity to effectively and speedily discharge our constitutional mandate. We must ensure that the budget, when finally passed, meets the expectation of the people we represent. We must equally follow through the implementation processes through our various oversight engagements. Mr. President, let me conclude by short vote of thanks. My short vote of thanks by once again thanking you for undertaking this important exercise of budget presentation. To the National Assembly, I wish to categorically express the assurances of the 10th Assembly to work with you to ensure that you succeed and also Nigeria succeeds. Thank you, and may God continue to place the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellency the President, all protocols duly observed. In line with our practice, we will now call on the Deputy Speaker and the Deputy Senate President immediately after this National Assembly to lead Mr. President and his esteemed delegation out while the joint session will continue. The national anthem.
Welcome back from the live telecast. We'll now continue with our regular programs. Stay tuned. At the TVC Women's Network First Sales Fair. Join us for an amazing opportunity to explore a wide array of products and services at festive discounts. Discover irresistible offers. Mark your calendar, December 15th to 17th, 2023. Venue, TVC Communications, 1 Continental Drive, off CMD Road, Ikosiketu, Lagos. Time, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Immerse yourself in the festive vibe with a shopping spree featuring exciting games, stunning showcases, and live performances. Wrap up your shopping list with unmissable savings. For inquiries, call 0803-284-8509. Join us for an unforgettable holiday shopping adventure. This event.